Breakfast at Tiffany's was a sacred film in my household growing up. My mother's VHS tape, fuzzily recorded off TV, was plastered in do not tape over warning labels, a defense I might have to explain to someone born ten years later than I was. The opening credits on this worn copy were briefly disrupted with footage from the 1988 Wimbledon men's final, still overlaid, in an altogether lovely technological blip, with the wistful strains of Henry Mancini's Moon River theme. The Warning Labels Dated from shortly after this unfortunate, swiftly aborted overlap, clued at 50, a thriller less interested in a killer and more in character, I thus grew up thinking of Breakfast at Tiffany's as a film that belonged, via the tape, in a most literal and physical sense, specifically to one person. And then, by extension, to me, as a kind of inheritance. We watched it many times in my childhood, when I was rather too young to understand what exactly Manhattan socialite Holly Golightly did with. It's hard to think of many films that have been so extensively broken down into enduring images and echoing symbology, quite independently of its own fandom. Turns out young me was quite wrong, whatever the aura of that scratchy VHS tape, at 60, it turns out, breakfast at Tiffany's sort of belongs to everyone, whether they know it or not.